Hello everybody and welcome to today's live question and answer session where I'm going to be just answering run-of-the-mill SEO questions or whatever you want me to go through, um, mainly for those people who signed up to do the free SEO course. There's always going to be questions and as you know, there's always going to be answers as well. So get your questions answered here today. Um, let me know where you're from, who's watching, and do put your questions in the live chat. I'm more than happy to share whatever you think I need to share um, to help you guys that are doing the free SEO course because um, many of you will know if you try and contact me through Facebook with questions, I don't have time to, to sit and look at everyone's questions and analyze their websites. But this is a perfect opportunity for me to answer your questions in, in general um, for anyone out there. So do ask your questions um, here and I will do my best to answer as many as I possibly can. Good morning, Mr. Paul Hogden. Um, yeah, recording videos today, mate, for YouTube as well as doing this little live as well. So I've got a free day today, no real appointments and calls or anything. So I am going to be blasting out as much as I possibly can. Um, more videos from a free SEO course, uh, more tutorials and everything else. I know people will be sick to death listening to my voice um, <laughs> after it all, but hopefully it's all done and helps certain people out there uh, move up to the next level when it comes to their SEO efforts. So guys, do let me know what you want answered. Um, there are a number of people coming in. Let me know where you're from. Um, and remember, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Ask whatever you want. Um, this is the perfect show to, um, to, to get your questions asked, um, you know, whether, whether it's the bizarre one or whatever. So we've got questions coming in. We've got David Moore from Australia. Great to see you, mate, at... Uh, must be getting on a bit over there. Um, so someone's up late in Australia. Um, but yeah, so Andrew Hudson, how did I get started? So how I got started many years ago uh, was I, I started out as a crappy web designer, to be honest. Um, you know, SEO wasn't a major thing when I started out, but I was just messing around um, with websites and try to pass myself off as a web designer which I was really bad at and they uh, started to to move towards SEO as that started to come out um you know I started around about 2002 um messed around with website for about, websites for a year or so um just I, I was just garbage at it um, and but I was still making money from it and uh, doing okay but uh, I, I you know really when SEO started to come out and uh, I was finding out more about it on forums and whatnot, it really started to pique my interest in that area and it kind of evolved from there. Um, so, yeah, it was just by blagging, reading forums and, you know, the internet was a, a thing I was quite passionate about in general and it just kind of evolved from there. But, yeah, it's uh, that is how it started in a nutshell. Um Surround, <coughs> um, do you have any thoughts about doing SEO for a non-business personal website? Um, I mean, it can be done, of course, um, you know, to, to informational websites um, and stuff like that. Now, can you still make money from them? Yes, you can still monetize them in some way through AdSense or, or something similar. Um, so, yeah, it, it can work in the right places um you know if you've got the right goals to to aim for you know whether it's putting out good information um and stuff like that or providing value to the internet then there's absolutely no reason why you can't do that so 100 percent, you know if it's going to drive traffic you know i would always be looking at the monetization angle as well because no one's providing that value without there being a money um angle in there somehow it's got to pay for itself you know um so you do have to think about that but i'm sure there will be an angle in some way where you can somehow make money from that um 
you know, whether it's directly, indirectly or whatever. So yeah, 100%, I would go for it um, if you feel that that's something that, that people are going to be interested in because if it gets traffic, it makes money. Simple as that. Um, Ryan Houghton, I'm all good, mate. So just been churning out a few videos this morning for my YouTube. Well, recording them and they're not live yet. Um, and the snow, mate, it's, the snow's off now. We, we got a bit of a flurry earlier on but it, it kind of lay down, but we're getting it between 8 tonight and 8 tomorrow. Um, 8, 8 p.m. tonight till 8 a.m. tomorrow, so we're apparently going to get battered with it. Um, hopefully it lies and we can build snowmen and stuff, give give the lockdown life a bit of fun. Um, so <laughs> uh, I'm just dying to get outside with my little guy and make a snowman with him because I've never actually done that before and he's two and um, he actually hasn't seen snow before um until this year but obviously it's been the kind of crappy snow that's that's um been in scotland this year so it's not been thick enough to build a snowman but i'd love to just go out this afternoon and and build a snowman and with a carrot and all that stuff because yeah lockdown's getting me down a little bit um <laughs> so i need to do something uh miko back good to see you man I have a site ranking number one for keywords in Yahoo, Bing, DuckDuckGo, getting Google keyword ranked from 16 through to 31. I think I have an algo penalty, but what do you think on pages spot on? Um, without seeing it, it's obviously very hard to say, Miko back, but obviously Yahoo, Bing and all that kind of stuff, you can rank with exact match domain names and content and everything else fairly easily on these other uh, search engines. Google's a little bit more um difficult uh however you know as do do you have good links going there you know you're seeing your own pages on point but is the link building on point as well are you building enough links to to jump in there because obviously youtube's a lot more competitive than bing yahoo and everything else so uh, you know you could you could have a some kind of penalty or partial penalty or whatever um you know but have you been building links is what i'd be asking me go back because when someone ranks position 16 in google you know if you've got an algo penalty you shouldn't be ranking at all so that would be the first thing you know i just don't think you're ranking well enough um but again i'm more than happy to take a look at it if you want to ping me um, the URL on Facebook or whatever, but it's obviously very difficult for me to say without seeing it. But the fact that you're in position 16 would suggest that uh, there there is no algo penalty and it's just maybe needing a little push through um, links or, or whatever it might be that, that you're lacking on on there. So I can have a look at it for you if you want me to have a quick look, just ping me on Facebook or whatever ping me through my website, craigcampbellseo.com. Just say it's Miko back because I do get a load of garbage on there and I ignore half of them. But obviously, if I say to you um, to do that, then I'm, I'm more than happy to have a look at it. Um, so it is good to see Rich Web Developer, 7 a.m. over there, mate, and listening to my voice must be, must be torture, um, if I'm being honest. But uh, good to finally see you back. Uh, on the the lives, um, hopefully you get back more often, mate, because you used to be in there all the time um, and obviously disappeared uh, when you had the ill health, but we need you back, mate. Um, but, yeah, all good here, um, and hopefully all is good over there, even though it's 7 a.m. I'm assuming your little guy um, is partly to blame for you being up that early. Um, either that or you're sick. You know, 7 a.m., that's the middle of the night for me. Um, Eddie Creative, do you still edit articles yourself or do you have an editor with a WordPress login who edits the content you purchase, adds graphics and links? I need my process to be more passive. So yes, I have someone who writes the content. I've also got someone else who does the graphics. They, they both have logins and work together to, to make sure that that flow happens. I don't want to be sitting there you know, adding the content and uh, adding images and, and links and stuff like that. So obviously I give them training and guidance and and uh, have processes in place to, to help that um, along the way. And obviously I do oversee it. Um, 
but I, I, I don't want to be doing that donkey work myself. It's it's a lot of work, and the only way I can really scale up and do loads of videos and everything else is if I delegate a lot of the heavy lifting, which involves writing that content and uh, and getting editors to edit it and, and add the, the links and everything else. So, yeah, something I very much do give to other people. I don't want to be doing that. Um, whether it's for my own website or whether it's for other projects that I've got, um, I make sure that I get the, the team that I've got in place to do a lot of that stuff because, as we all know, it's tedious stuff and anyone can do it. So um, they just follow the, the SOPs that I've got and uh, it doesn't really go far wrong. Obviously, people uh, make mistakes, so you probably do want to audit your website um, a little more regularly in case someone maybe adds a broken link or you know, copies and pastes something and misses out a bit of it or whatever. Um, but yeah, more frequent auditing just to keep an eye on it um, is what you want to be doing. But yeah, that's how I do it. I just hate all of that stuff. Rich web developer, do you use Google Analytics at all? Of course, um, it would be crazy not to use the data you get from Google Analytics to, you know, understand your website better and, and you know, analyze where your traffic's coming from and, and you know, even see things like what pages are working really well for you or find other search terms loosely related to, to things in your website. So I think analytics is something that I still do use on a regular basis. Probably not as much as you might think, but yeah, you've got to, you've got to use all the data you've got to refine the process. And of course, I like to know where a lot of my traffic's coming from. Obviously, in the last year, I've put a lot of effort into social media and YouTube, and it's nice to see that in analytics flowing through to, to the website because that is a main driver of traffic to my particular website, you know, social media, YouTube, and everything else is where a lot of traffic comes from. So it just shows me that the efforts that I'm putting in are actually being rewarded in some way with traffic. So I think, you know, using it even just for that to give yourself a pat on the back um, and keep you encouraged to keep doing more work um, is important. So yeah, analytics is a great tool and obviously free. Um, why wouldn't you use it to some degree? Gary Farmer, good to see you. Um, good to see you, mate. I've seen pictures of you playing foot golf at the weekend, mate, and I'm going to come and whip your ass one of these days. Um, dying to get a game of that, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, could be fun, mate. When this thing is all over, I'm coming uh, along to your local place um, and, and challenging you. So I'm calling you out now, Gary Farmer. Um, I'm coming to take your... Uh, foot golf title right off you. Um, well, I'll give it a good try. <laughs> I don't want to be all talk. Um, I probably uh, will fail miserably, but um, but nah, I, I, I consider myself to be fairly good um, at foot golf um, and have a good... Uh, yeah, I'm going to be good at it, man. I'm not going to say any more, but uh, don't I build myself up too much for failure, but... Uh, Invite me along when this is over, Gary, and uh, I'll give you a game one Saturday morning or something. Would be class. Um, Ryan Houghton, it's quite thick there. Have the afternoon off um, and get building a snowman, mate. I'd love to. If the snow does lie, I will be um, building a snowman. <laughs> um, that is for sure. Um, but if not, then I'll just churn out more videos because I'm bored shitless. Um... Some people mention other analytics sites, but I use Stan's Google personally. It works well enough. Eddie Creative. I don't know what Craig does with his, but a good content writer will often edit themselves and format, and, and it can help. Yeah, so a good content writer is important, and getting them to edit it, add it to WordPress, and format it and everything else is all part of the process for me. Um, I want someone to be doing that for me, all of it. So you're right, Ryan. Totally agree. Um I use it occasionally as well. And yes, me go back. I'll get back to you after this. And um, we'll have a look at it. So just ping it over. Um, 11 p.m. Good quiet time to work over in Australia. Um, yeah, it's it's really important um, to, to sometimes get some time. I get quite a lot of work done at these crazy times. Just no one bothering me. Just put my headphones in and bang, bang, bang. You know, whether it's emails or whatever. Um, so, yeah. 
it's always a good time to work, mate. Um, so good to see you grinding. Um, Grius, Anja, what are my suggestions as a backlink strategy? So backlinks is obviously a very big subject and something you could talk for hours and hours and hours about. You know, what I would say to anyone um, to begin with is try and go out and, and analyze the competition first. See what backlinks you've got, try and get them, reach out to them, you know, do that first and foremost, but then you need to be doing stuff that your comp uh, competitors are not doing, and that's where things become a little bit more grey, if you like. Um, backlinks, you know, you can do outreach, buy guest posts, tear them up with, uh, you know, power them up with tier two links using the likes of SEO Autopilot, niche edits. You can build PBNs. You can use expired domain names to build power to your website. Um, something else that I recently tried was I seen a whole, so I'll go into Ahrefs and I will go to a newspaper like the Independent. And I'll find the broken links that are on the independent. And then what I'll do is I'll run those broken links through Scrapebox to find out which of those broken links are actually expired domain names. And then I can acquire that expired domain name and then do a, a, re a redirect to the page of my choice. Therefore, getting me links in high profile PR articles that I don't have to pay thousands of bucks for. So that's another little trick there as well. But there's so many different little tricks that you can get from a link building point of view, whether that be PBNs, niche edits, um, you know, just good downright trickery. Um, there's tons of them in my YouTube channel. So there's there's a link building section with a whole bunch of different tricks um, and tips uh, when it comes to link building and... Uh, you just got to mix it all up and try and do as much of the, the legit stuff as you possibly can and maybe just the ice on top of the cake would be a few of those kind of greer hat things um, that you can do. But more often than not, um, depending on what niche you're in, you might just be able to get away with guest posting and generic links and giving them a bit of power. You don't have to go all dirty. Um, you know, dirty stuff really has to come into play in highly competitive niches like gambling um, and that type of thing. So you, you only need to do um, as much as you need to do for your niche. So you don't have to get all dirty. But there is a playlist on this channel um, that you can go and look at, which will give you some more um, ideas when it comes to... Uh, link building and yes Ryan you are a content writer and you do like dirty work um, and that's not the only dirty stuff that you like but uh, yeah each to their own that you know content writers are, are, are massively valuable um, in this industry and, and we all need good content writers they are quite hard to come by um, however um, yeah someone needs to do the donkey work and you guys are very much appreciated and uh, from me anyway you know i i, I love um my content writers <laughs> they do a great job and uh, yeah it's it's really important um hi carol morley good to see you i don't think i've seen you for weeks actually carol but uh yeah good to see you back um if you've got any questions make sure you do ask them um Shabam, blog not indexing, done everything, any other suggestion? There's a reason it's not indexing. Um, you know, first I would do an audit to make sure that Google can access all of the content you've got. Second, I would check your content and likes of Copyscape or copy and paste paragraphs of it into Google. Um, there's a reason it's not indexing and that, that is either you're impatient and you're expecting to index instantly or your content's not good enough and it's been copied and pasted from somewhere else or you've got underlying technical issues with your website that's making Google uh, find it difficult to, to crawl and index those pages. So it's one of those three. It's, it is, I can tell you that off the bat. Um, so go back and revise what you've done um, and try and figure out um what that is 
Jan Doan, is there any mass schema builder? I have 500 location pages to add local schema to them. Ooh. Um, schema is the bane. Uh, now, there are um, tools out there that do schema. Um, and they, they, I'll be honest, I'm now, I've taken off everything. I had WordLift on my website for schema. I've also had the, the schemaapp.com and all of that kind of stuff. Now, it always brings errors and problems. You you know, there's nothing better than add, manually adding schema, which is a pain in the ass to do. Um, but get a VA to do it um, and go through and add it manually and double check that it has been added properly. I think the mass schema builders are not 100% yet, you know, they, they are flagging up a lot of errors, which is why I've kind of removed the lights of Wordlift and various other bits and bobs that I've tried over the years. Um, but is schema important? I, I think, you know, it is, you know, you can get uh, a lot of value from adding schema to your pages, um, FAQ schema, product schema, you know, service schema, whatever it's going to be, um, uh, you know, adding local schema, is also going to be massively important um, for those location pages. So yes, 100%, uh, you know, I would be adding it. Um, but to my knowledge and through my own testing, I've never had a mass schema builder do it all properly. It's always ended up fucked up. Um, hence why I'm now looking for a VA to add schema to all of my pages. If there's anyone out there, please reach out. Do not bombard me. Um, by the millions, but yeah, I'm looking for someone that actually knows how to add schema manually, do it quickly, um, and I'm happy to pay for it. So um, try and avoid the, the, the schema builders um, as far as I'm concerned, because they've all been pretty poor, um, if I'm honest. And bring it on, Gary. I look forward to it, mate. Um, Carol, if I give you a URL, could you tell me if it's a toxic PBN? Sure, do it on here. Um, paste it in here and I'll have a look at it so everyone can see, unless it's private, just ping me um, if you don't want to share it publicly um, but I'm also happy to look at it on here so that everyone learns from it um, if you want, but if not, just ping me in Facebook, LinkedIn or whatever and I'll have a look at it for you um, and tell you why I think it's toxic or not um, Andrew Hudson, any training courses you'd recommend there is a ton of training courses out there that, that are beneficial, but it really depends on you and what you need to learn. Um, you know, is it YouTube? Is it Schema? You know, there's training courses and everything that's out there. Um, I try and give a lot of value and free training courses away on affiliate marketing and generic SEO stuff, which you will find on my YouTube channel or on my website. But over and above that, very specific stuff, People are launching CTR courses. They're launching all sorts of stuff. Um, and they're all very good, to be honest. It just really depends on where those weaknesses are in your skill set. Uh, and we all have them. You know, I, I buy courses regularly be because, you know, I need to brush up in a certain area. Um, but, yeah, it really depends on, on what type of training course you need um, so let me know what it is you think you need to learn and I may be able to point you closer to the right direction um, Benkat Ready continue to previous question the negative news is about his personal name not a business name only one link is there how can I remove or decrease the ranking of that negative news link you can't remove it, um, you know, if it's not your website and you don't have access to remove the negative news. What you want to do is potentially get positive news on more powerful websites or Web 2.0s utilizing the likes of Medium or LinkedIn or, you know, a lot of the Google News websites that are quite powerful out there um, and optimize that for that person's name, um, personal name, and then that should push all of that stuff down. Um, reputation management is fairly simple and easy, providing they do have the right budget. Uh, and what you'd be essentially doing is utilising the power of P PR um, and other high-profile websites and optimising that content so that the, the negative stuff goes further and further down the rankings. So very simple, very straightforward and easy. Um, but it can cost you a few quid, unfortunately. Um, 
<laughs> Ryan Houghton, surely I'm not the only one who hasn't heard about foot golf. Come on, dude, Google it. So if you don't know what foot golf is, um, it's like golf. Small, it's like smaller holes, though. Um, and you kick the ball rather than using a golf club and a golf ball. You just ping the ball towards the hole and try and get your hole in one, hole in three, four, whatever it takes to get there um, using your footballing abilities rather than your swinging a golf club abilities. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I can see Rich, web developer. I'm surprised you guys have not heard of this. Um, so, um, madness. But, yeah, that, that's an explanation of what it is. Um Miko Bank, um, I will answer that after I offer of this um, for you. Um, and as I see, Rich, foot golf is football golf. And that's what it's all about. Um, so, Grace, Anja, what is your suggestions about redirecting an expired domain? I mean, 301, redirect or create a page on the domain and link from there. So, Grace, what I tend to do when I've got an expired domain name is I would repopulate it um, with the old content where possible and then do the redirects because if you're just buying an expired domain and it's been out of, um, it's not been live for you know a year or two, are those URLs still in Google's index first and foremost? Um, and if they're not, then I would want them back in Google's index before I start doing 301 redirects. But whilst I do that, I sometimes power up those URLs as well and just give them a, a little bit of extra power um, before I then do the redirect. But then you can either redirect the whole website to the most relevant section on your website or to your homepage or whatever, um, but you can also, you know, do this kind of manually um, and create a page and then do a redirect from that page URL. I think that's more in depth. Um, and, you know, if that specific page on the, the expired domain name has got backlinks to it, that is the most appropriate thing to be doing rather than just a blanket 301 redirect. I would want links from those internal pages going to the relevant parts of my website. So I would be doing it the harder way, which is recreating the website um, and then doing the, the redirect from there or the link from there. Um, Eddie Creative, regarding 301 redirects and expired domains, is there any limit to how many domains you can redirect to your main domain? And is this worth it? Will you get penalized for too many redirects? I'd imagine you probably will get penalized to some degree if you're going to do this in a massive, massive scale. Um, you know, that's why I'm not a fan of just doing 301 redirects all the time. I tend to build out PBNs or, or assets on them, you know, money websites or whatever. Um on probably eight out of 10 of them. Now, on the odd occasion, I will just simply do a 301 redirect. And it is worth it. It does work very, very well. But I like creating assets and making affiliate websites. And I think there's more value in building out these websites rather than just doing a, a, a redirect. Um, but if you're going to have like hundreds of redirects, I think that's a massive footprint in itself to Google showing exactly what you're doing. So I would only be doing, you know, a handful of them you know, probably no more than six or seven um, overall. Now, it's perfectly feasible to, to have six or seven redirects, you know, as you change brand and you maybe had an agency before or whatever. I've got that and it's not harmed me. But if you're starting to do that in a big, massive scale, I think you're, you're you know, shooting yourself in the foot. Um, so be careful and uh, try and not overdo it would be my advice. Business growth ready Google Drive stacks. Do you ever have more than one client stack per Google Drive accounts? No, um, I personally don't. Um, I like to to play safe. Um, it's more work. Could you do more than one client? Um, yes, you could. But again, I'd probably do two or three tops. Do not go wild or create a you know a kind of link wheel or anything like that from a Google stack. I like to do one pair 
client, if I was doing a client or one per project, just to keep things um, safe and future proofing uh, those businesses rather than shooting them all in the foot. Gary Farmer, it's now an organised and recognised sport. I'll be playing in the Scottish Open this year. You heard my name here first, by the way. Listen, I'll be like the Tiger Woods of foot golf. Um, I'm just going to come in there and take that trophy right off you. Um, so, yeah, if you're in the Open, then I am also going to be somehow forcing my way into the Open. So, <laughs> hey. Um, but, guys, do keep your questions coming. Um, I am nearly up to speed. We'll get four or five other questions in the pipeline there, but keep asking, and I will keep answering. Make sure you also do give me a like and subscribe to the channel. I do this regular, trying to answer questions that maybe other people don't want to answer. And um, so if you do want this, we try and do it um, at least once a week. Um, and I do do other shows throughout the week with different guests as well. So you can pick their brains too. Um, foot golf replaced kicking the Coke can or beer cans in the streets back in the 70s or 80s. Um, I do remember actually playing uh, football with Coke cans and stuff on occasion in primary school. Um, not that I was born in the 70s, I was born in the 80s. But yeah, um, had to had to do what we had to do um, to get a game going. Kazoo, all good here, mate, all good. Can't complain, hope all is good with you. Um, I need your advice on this, Craig. What do you recommend starting an SEO agency or SEO consulting I'm considering quitting my nine to five job. Now, I'm not going to sit there and say, jump out your job straight away. Make sure you've picked the right time. Whether you start an agency or consulting is entirely up to you and your experience. Um, both of those can make you a lot of money. And um, it really comes down to your skill set. Um, I started out on my own and quit the day job, became a freelancer and then somehow ended up with an agency because I was needing a sales guy, a web guy, a content writer, and so on. Uh, so I ended up having an agency by default. And obviously to pay for those staff, I had to do client work. Um, so it really comes down to you. But, you know, you can have massively successful agencies. Personally, I don't like the agency model. For, you know, that's just a personal thing. Um, I don't like managing people. Um, and I found that whole thing quite stressful, but I made a lot of mistakes, didn't have the right processes and all of that stuff. But there are, you know, if, if you're experienced and you currently work in an agency or whatever, then it can be a nice lucrative model as long as your SOPs are in place, you've got the right team, you delegate, you don't build yourself into the business, you work on the business um, and you, you, you know, whatever. But doing client work, is important you know it's a great learning curve it's part of your apprenticeship and a way for you to make money whilst learning on the job and then potentially as you get more experience you can then either become more of a consultant affiliate marketer or whatever you decide is the best monetization route for you but it's hard for me to advise without knowing you or your background or or anything like that um but if you're in a job, try and get some stuff on the side, start earning some income. Once you start earning your wage um, on the side, then that's a good time to, to jump ship. Um, it's tough out there. You know, people sometimes say they'll do a campaign with you and then pull out or, you know, they drop out after a month. So just be very, very careful uh, that you have the financial backup, you know, you've got some savings and hopefully got a few clients in the bag before you do jump ship um, because obviously times are tough out there and you do not want to be jumping ship too early. So be patient um, and I'm sure you will make the right choice and obviously good luck with that. Um, we've all been there, we've all done it. Um, it is a scary thought, but Sometimes you've just got to do what you've got to do and, and to progress in life. So it's all fun and games. And uh, if I can help you in any other way, feel free to shoot me up. I'm always liking to see people move on to the next level. Um, 
So Jan Doan created a zap for NEP, GMB, RSS, expired Tumblr, WordPress, YouTube. Do you think that's a good strategy for test, you know, when you're testing it out? Listen, there's no right or wrong strategy. I love people like you who do these tests and, you know, expired Tumblrs are good. WordPress, listen, all of this kind of stuff is good. Um, and obviously getting your name, address and postcode doesn't just have to be on directories or whatever, you know, as, as long as you've got a place to put them online, um, you know, that that's something that, uh, that, yeah, you know, I've done it. I've blasted the NAP um, out on blog comments and, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, and to answer what is a zap for that, basically what he's saying is he's basically zapping out his name, address, and phone number um, for GMBs. Now, obviously, what you want or what GMB is looking for is consistencies of your name, address, and phone number on other websites. And that's where a lot of us do citations. Um, but um, Jan is trying them on other places, you know, expired Tumblrs, on WordPress websites, YouTube, and whatever. Um and I've personally found that having the, the NAP on other websites can also work for you as well. So there's nothing to suggest that it only works on directory. So guys like Jan, um, you know, doing crazy testing is what it's all about. And uh, yeah, I've got massive amounts of respect for that, Jan. Be keen to know how well you think that works for you. Um so let us know uh, in a future show or even leave a comment on this video so that people can see it if they want to follow it. Do remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Um, that would be much appreciated. And hey, Magic PR, Magic, good to see you, man. Um, Magic PR do amazing PR campaigns, as does Randy Roday, who's also just came in. So... Uh, yeah, have a look at these guys, Randy and Magic PR. They do amazing PR campaigns, which uh, I have used both personally and do amazing stuff. But the firm in UK, what is in your Google stack? Listen, my Google stacks, I use Staxio, um, staxio.io. So that's S-T-A-X-I-O dot I-O. And you'll be able to see if you go onto their website, what goes into a Google stack basically just all of Google's properties. Um, and that is something that, that I would use for Google Stacks. I think Stacks was a great platform for building that and they uh, check it out. Um, that's that's what I'm using. Um, Camran <laughs> Zafar, how I start SEO and digital marketing agency business. Camran, as I said to the last guy, um, it's who says a digital marketing agency is the best business for you um, you know you've got multiple options if you want to start an agency you have to get clients you have to build a team um, and you have to provide case studies and build your brand um, but it's, it's a very open-ended question um, you could dig around that for a long time if you do have something very specific to ask ask away, but obviously how to start an SEO and digital marketing agency business, you know, without knowing the person behind it, it is really very difficult to answer. Do you even know SEO or do you see this as just a, a money-making opportunity? Um, if so, then, you know, what I'd be suggesting is you, you learn more about SEO before you do consider starting an agency because so many guys out there are charging for SEO services and they're not actually qualified or skilled enough to be able to do that um, and that is where the problems lie and your agency could go bust because I think people are very quick to now establish who's good and who's bad so be careful man um, but yeah if you've got any specific questions I can answer them but how to start an agency without knowing you um, it, it's a difficult one mate so I don't know where your weaknesses lie um kazoo no problem at all um gary farmer answered that see you later rich see you um at some point online um so grace is 
and chance in ranging with content which was created by software like Article Builder um, or others which pay quite a high fee as a subscription. So I'm uh, is there any chance of ranking with content that's created with software? Um, <coughs> I don't know the software you're referring to. Um, can you rank with software um, or article builders? Yes, some of them can rank. Some of them are absolute garbage. Um, depends on the, the niche, the level of competition. You know, people also use things like mass page builders and people will say that duplicate content doesn't work. But in certain areas and doing it in massive volume, it clearly does work. So the answer is yes, sometimes it can work. And the answer will be no, sometimes it's a complete waste of money. It really depends on that article builder software and the, the keywords and stuff that you are going to try and target. Now, what I would say is nothing is going to beat just ordering content from someone who's doing it, well writing it, optimizing it, running it through Surfer, POP or something similar, um, adding subheadings and a whole bunch of other stuff, including internal links and, and all of that kind of stuff to make the on-page SEO on point. Nothing's going to be manually doing it. Um, and these article builders, the structure of the content and stuff like that is somewhat sketchy. So I would try, if, I, if, I, if I'm putting my actual training hat on and someone came to me and said, what's the best way, buying it or using that, it would always be get a content writer to do proper content by buying it um, or doing it yourself or whatever. Um, article builders tend to be of low quality. So... But that doesn't mean they can't work or they don't, you know, form part of a strategy. People use them for PBNs and, and you know, whatever. So um, they, they, they do serve their purpose as well. So hopefully that answers that question. Um, Miko back. what is the best method for powering up the Google Stacks and getting the best out of it? Um, I use SEO Autopilot. You can use like, Rummer, GSA. Um, and tools like that. Now, the, the key part of this GSE, and I, I think that's the most commonly used um, automated link building, powering up other assets kind of tool. Um, and the, the key part there is to power that up by scraping your own lists and making sure that you're not throwing all the other kind of garbage spam that every other Tom, Dick and Harry can do through GSA. The key to GSA is scraping your own list and making sure that what you're powering up those Google Stacks with is relatively unique to some degree. Um, because what a lot of people do is just load things into GSA and press start and bang, it goes out. And the, the assets that are there are just not great and they've been spammed to death for years and years and years and pass little to no value. So that's why I do like other tools like SU Autopilot, which is adding new inventory all the time um, and, and stuff like that. But if you're going to use GSE and whatnot, then uh, make sure that you do um, scrape up your own list. I think that is where you're going to get the edge over the competition. Um and powering those up, but you you know you can also use SAP links, um, niche edits, whatever you know anything that's got power and authority that you can get that's going to power up those Google Stacks is probably what you want to be slamming at it, um, and make sure that you slam it fairly hard as well. You know a lot of people, say, I've had guys say things like, "Yeah, I've built two links to to this or that property," and you're just like, "Fuck." You know, people are slamming thousands at these. So make sure you give it a good powering up as well. Um, you know, a lot of people are quite reserved in that respect. But when you're going to do a bit of spam, you might as well do it properly and pass actual power. So bear that in mind as well. Um, Cameron, no problem at all. Uh, as I say, if you've got any specific questions about the agency model, happy to answer them. But how to start one up is... Uh, as I say, a very loose question. But guys, I have answered all the questions up to date. Um, do put any other questions. I've got 16 minutes left to answer anything else that you guys have got out there. So do put more questions in the chat and I will try and get through more of those. 
Also, make sure that you do like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I've also recently on the YouTube channel been segmenting everything that I've got into playlists so that if you want to learn more about um, different things like local SEO or whatever, then uh, you know I've got playlists on that or the knowledge panel or link building or, or affiliate marketing there's, there's playlists for everything so do check them out and Carl Molly no the URL didn't come through um, sometimes when you put a URL into the chat there it doesn't come through for some reason or not um, but just put it in like the name dot com just spell it out um, and I'll, I'll check that out for you Um Magic PR. Am I bringing out any new courses this year? Um, I'm not sure. I, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know is, is the answer to that. If it's relevant and there is a course, then I I will bring something out. I tend not to, to uh, you know, launch course after course after course because people get fed up of that. Um and I'm, I'm trying to launch as much as I can for free as well. So I'll see what happens. But I'm, I'll, I'll be will be adding to my YouTube channel all the time, which is essentially going to be segmented into sections, which is pretty much a course. So for, I will be launching a lot more content. Let's put it that way. Um, and I will come back to your question in a second, Carol. Who is the best SEO person I know of, Wayne? Me, of course, like that goes without saying. Nah, I'm only kidding. There's a lot of great guys out there and um, doing different parts of SEO. Um, you know, that are different skills, you know, affiliate marketers, agency owners, and um, really technical SEOs. So it would be unfair to me for me to sit and say one guy's the best because I've learned a lot from a lot of different people. Um, you know, you get your likes of Matt Diggity, who opens your eyes to affiliate marketing and buying and selling websites. Matthew Woodward doing the affiliate model for many, many years, and um, you know, traveling the world while he was, you know, doing his blog. Um there's just so many of them. Like I've I've just learned a lot from a whole bunch of different people. So I don't know if there's any well, there is. There, there's amazing SEOs out there, but I wouldn't like to just name anyone um, as the best person because, as I say, someone who's really good at affiliate marketing might be really bad at technical SEO and, and vice versa. So there's some super smart people out there and, and they've kind of pigeonholed themselves into certain areas of SEO. Um so, yeah, difficult to, to say. So I'm going to go for myself, um, Wayne. I'm a good all-rounder, 18 years experience, so know a lot about pretty much not a lot. But uh, <laughs> nah, I'm only kidding. But nah, I'd, say, I'd say I've got a rounded skill set and I'm going to say myself. So um, not to be a douchebag, but I just don't want to be naming anyone else's names because um, I don't think that's fair to the rest of the industry because I think so many people offer so much value across the industry. Uh, Marky Boy, what is a Google stack? So essentially it is links from Google properties like PDFs and a whole bunch of other stuff. The best way to explain it is go to staxio.io, S-T-A-X-I-O. In fact, what I'll do is I'm going to share my screen because then I'm going to look at Carol's... Uh, it's not stackzio.io at all, by the way. It's stackzio.tools. Um, I am a complete and utter douchebag. Um, but I'm going to share my screen and show you what Stackzio is. Um, so let me share my screen, guys. So Stackzio um, is basically the, the, the tool that I've referred to when it comes to creating a stack um, so it autom automatically builds websites and backlinks from Google Stack. So a Google Stack is Google's property. So Blogger is owned by Google. Um, but Google Spreadsheets, Google Documents, Google Slides, Google Forms, um, PDFs, PowerPoints, Excel Spreadsheets, Google Sites, Calendar, Cloud, all of this stuff is all seen as a Google stack. And you would be linking to your website 
from a whole bunch of these properties. That is a Google stack. Now, people will say, why the hell would you want to do that? Why not? You know, using Google uh, and linking from Google's own properties is something that works very well. And why wouldn't it? You know, Google are obviously going to favor their own properties. And if you're linking from those properties, it is likely to give you that extra little ranking boost that you need. Um, so that is what a Google stack is. And you can use stackseal.tools. Um, in fact, I'll just get the price for you guys. Grab it now. Um, it costs you 59 euros a month um, to use. So have a look at it. Um, they've got FEQs on there as well. Can you use it in multiple computers and, and all of that kind of stuff? So a whole bunch of information on Staxio right there. Um, but I'm going to come back to Carol Morley. So it's photo SDE Frazes. Let me just get this um, website. So photo D Frazes. Um, where are you? Frazes.com. Let's have a look. Oops, that's not working. So, wait a minute, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second and then I'll get that up. Um, photo B Frazes. Photos. Photos. That's where I was going wrong. So creating a website for free is photo the phrase. So I'm going to share my screen again. Um, let's have a look at this for you, Carl. So that is the website there. Creating a website for free. So I'm just going to have a look at this and the metrics and see what's going on. So it's a DR48 referring domains. I mean, it's not getting any traffic, which is quite important to look at. Um, for me, this is a dead ass website. Um, I wouldn't say so. It's you know it's ranking for a whole bunch of stuff in Indonesia now. It used to get a lot of traffic back 2017, 2018, but it's fallen off a cliff. Um, and there's obviously got to be a reason for that. And obviously, the organic keywords is as low as it's ever been for a number of years. Um, you know, it's absolute garbage. And um, the URL, uh, the UR. Is, is fairly low. I would expect this score to be closer to this. Um, it's got tons of referring domain names, tons of backlinks, but it ranks for a handful of search terms and gets little to no organic traffic. So would I want a link from a website like that? Absolutely not. It's just a pile of garbage, likely to be a PBN of some description that's just not well maintained. What I'd be expecting someone to have done is obviously taken this, it's obviously expired and they've not really done anything with it other than slamming loads of backlinks at it, which is not actually doing anything. So for me, if you want to get juice from a website and um, link value or whatever you want to call it, it would need to come from a website that does get traffic and rankings. So that um, it's just garbage. Now, someone has created seven sites of a similar profile and then that link directly to a client's website. It's just garbage, um, Carol. It's not likely to damage you in any way. Um, just, there's no value there at all. It's just crappy PBN. Um, as far as I'm concerned, just absolute lost to the low garbage. More kidology uh, when I'm looking for a link. And I want links from websites that have traffic and rankings as well. I think that's going to pass a lot more value than something as garbage as that. Um, David Moore, can you share a goal that is really exciting you this year? Um, I'm launching a couple of new projects. I don't want to really share what niches they're in, but yeah, um, it's always about launching new projects and building more assets. Um, 
Yeah, uh, and I hope to get back speaking and travelling again this year. I'm not sure that that will happen, but I, I've got to go with the thought process that that is going to happen. Um, otherwise, you know, I'm, I'm going to be massively disappointed. But uh, yeah, launching new projects, just continuing doing what I'm doing, refining my processes and building out more um, digital assets is what it's all about for me just now, trying to build up my YouTube channel and stuff like that. Um, and just utilizing the time that we've got while we're on lockdown to to the maximum and getting as much value out of that as I can. Um, and then hopefully I can go back to normal, traveling the world um, and uh, keep doing what I'm doing. So no major goals there, David, but uh, it is what it is. How's my football team doing this year? We are top of the league. Um, it, it's going well touch wood so far um so yeah i can't complain randy they they are they are very much clear of the competition who is celtic and it's looking good so can't complain um <laughs> kazu nakazawa i would be manually adding schema um you know, you've got schema tools out there that are free to use, and it, it, you know you can basically build your schema using those tools. I wouldn't be using um, any other way. I mean, people will tell you yes or no, um, or, or you know this way is better or whatever. But I think yeah, manually adding schema using the tools that are out there um, through Google um, is the best way to do it. Um, Mark has given me that, so another bit of knowledge for you, Mark. Just to clarify from earlier regarding 301 redirects, did you say you built out an expired domain and then 301 redirected it? What advantage does this have over just redirecting? So you're redirecting. So essentially, you buy a domain name and you just redirect it. Is that, are all those URLs and everything else all indexed in Google? Probably not. Now, if I was to repurpose the website, those metrics are going to shoot up massively. So when those pages go live again and all of those links that are pointing to all those internal pages again, the DR and the authority of that website is going to shoot up and then you do the redirect. So you're squeezing more juice out of a domain name than just simply redirecting something that's not in Google's index that has no value at all, really, other than the DR score that you're buying. So that is why I always repurpose them. I also want to make sure that when I do buy an expired domain name and I repurpose it, it allows me to see if Google still likes that domain name, if it still would rank the content that was on that domain name. Because what if someone spammed it to death before? Why would you blindly redirect a website that Google doesn't like to your money website. That 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 is some of the reasons why you would want to do it my way rather than just blindly redirecting because some joker out there could have absolutely hammered that website to death um, and you won't know that until you repurpose it and check everything out once everything uh, kicks in and you know probably 50% of expired domain names that you blindly buy if not more, have been spammed to death and you would never redirect to, to your money website. Absolutely not. And at that point, you've got the ability to clean them up, maybe link to your website once they are cleaned up or whatever. But yeah, I, I just don't believe in the process of just wildly um, doing 301 redirects. There's so many benefits to doing that um, my way and, and not that other way. Um need to head off, practice my swing for this up-and-coming football golf battle. Cheers for the video. Learned a lot. No problem. Rich is also running. Um, just thinking negative SEO. Carol, that, th those links from that website is not negative SEO. Unless there's tens of thousands of them, it's not negative SEO. Google will just simply ignore those crappy links, so don't think. It's just bad SEO, if you like, but you know, these kind of links Google will just simply ignore. They pass no value. So I wouldn't be thinking it's negative SEO unless it's done by the bucket load. Um, I'm getting 500,000 links popped at my website on a monthly basis. 
um, by someone who's trying to negative SEO me. Um, so that is the kind of thing you'd be looking for. Someone smashing the day, living daylights out of my website, um, trying to negative SEO me, but not just crappy little things like that. They're doing porn, Chinese stuff and everything. Um, so there you go. Timothy, hi. Um, Kazoo. Out of SEO question, what what is my favourite NBA team? It would have to be the New York Knicks. Now, I really don't know a lot about. Um, I like NBA. I think it's a great sport. Um, I really loved the Netflix uh, thing with Chicago Bulls and Michael Jordan and, and all of these guys. Um, so Chicago Bulls, I've always liked Michael Jordan since I was a young boy, you know, Nike or Jordan and, and all of that. And obviously when I was a kid growing up, Michael Jordan was the, the icon of the NBA world. However, in recent years, I've always just liked New York Knicks. I like their colours. I, I like New York. Um, and if I had to pick one, it'd probably be the New York Knicks going to Madison Square Gardens and watching them and, and stuff like that anytime I'm in New York. Um, but as I say, it was more, I like the colours, <laughs> so that's it. But, uh, you know, I do also have Golden State Warriors um, stuff. I've also got, who else I forgot? Can't even remember, but I've also got Chicago Bulls stuff. I bought um, some tops after seeing the, the Netflix series. I've got um, Scotty Pippen on my back. Uh, on some of my NB stuff because I think he is an absolute legend of the game. So, yeah, I, I, I'm not a, a major NB fan, but, yeah, I like the colours and I do like Scotty Pippen, Michael Jordan and various other people as well. And I also like the colours, the blue and yellow of the Golden State Warriors. So, um, yeah, um, but I just like the tops. They're comfortable to sit around in. Um, so there you go. And Eddie Creative, no problem at all, mate. Always happy to to answer and um, i will answer this last question and then that will be me for the day um can you tell me why my page didn't rank in the first page most of them stuck in second pain page travelcrog.com um you probably need more backlinks you need better on page um i don't want to tear your website apart live on a show that wouldn't be fair to do that um but if you're stuck in page two either your on page needs more or you need to be doing more links. And in fact, what I'll do is travel crog. Um, I'm not going to sit uh, and analyze it to any great degree, but I'm just going to look at the backlink profile and, and the rankings. It's got a DR of 0 0.5. Um, so you'd need to build more backlinks to that website. It's it's simple. Um, you know, you've got to page two with probably very good on page SEO. However, you know, looking at the website um, on Ahrefs, you've got a lot of organic keywords. You're doing a great job in terms of uh, that that kind of instant or. or you know, growth at the start, um, you've been able to go from pretty much nothing to right up to, to there. Um, and obviously your keywords is, is also increased uh, with a similar spike. So <coughs> you've obviously got to keep going, but what you're doing is pure on page. Um, that will carry you some way along the way, but you need to be building more links because the, the it's already got 41 referring domain names but you need more than that these referring domain names are garbage it's only giving you 0 0.5 of a dr score and uh, i think you need to build more backlinks and that will hopefully flip your website onto page one um but keep going with the content strategy because obviously you're doing something right your on page is good um, to, to shoot it up to there. Um, you just need to do a little bit more of that um, at a bigger scale and also build some backlinks. And you should be a hell of a lot closer to having good rankings from that point. But that is me for today, guys. Thank you very much for everyone who watched. Make sure you do like and subscribe. And uh, I will catch you guys again soon. Cheers.